today I'm going to be explaining my DWM setup because I get a lot of questions about it. So I thought, you know, I do have my suckless repo linked uh, below, but I felt like probably explaining it because you might look at it and might not fully get it. Let's get into it. So if we go to my suckless directory, we'll start with DWM. So we have all the patches. So if I list all the patches, so how many patches I've got? I've got nine patches here. So we have the alpha patch, which essentially all that does is you can see the bar here. This is actually transparent. So let me think, let me show you a wallpaper that will, yeah, this wallpaper, you can see that, oh, it is actually transparent. And not only that, it's actually blurred because of a uh, PyCom. So it's not actually because there's a, another patch, but as you can see, it kind of like, to me, this really reminds me of that, like Mac OS look, you know, where the bar is blurred. I don't know. I just like it, but yeah. So that is the first patch I have. The next one is move stack. All this does essentially is if we have three, yeah, we've got a couple windows here. You know, you can shift between all the windows that you got. However, if you want to move, actually, let me move my my webcam. So you can see that my mouse is like, you know, moving to which whichever window I select. Let's say I want to move this one above though. By default, you actually can't do this. But with this, you can do... Uh, so you know how you move by like alt so this is alt k right now this is alt j well you can also do shift alt and then this will move it up that way you can like move a specific window so i oh know it's just a bit handy next we've got always center this is when you spawn in a new window in floating mode it'll always be in the center because by default it actually spawns in the corner like that so it's just it, it makes more sense it makes more sense we've got attached below this is so that the Every time I spawn in a new window, it's not becoming the new uh, master. As you can see, my window on the left right now is the master. By default, it spawns wh whatever window you spawn, that's the new master. And it moves the previous master to the like the slave and it becomes in the bottom corner. But this way, it always becomes the, you can see if I spawn in a whole bunch of windows, it always goes into the corner here. Next, we have per tag and per tag, essentially by default, you can see that if I can, I can swap around like the size of the windows and all this good stuff. Or let's say I have three, I can swap if there's like two on here and then one here or whatever. By default, that applies for every single window. So if every single setup, like if I changed it that it was like this on this tab, on this setup, it would be the exact same. But per tag, as you can see, it has different settings for each tag. So you can see I might move the window all the way here. Or on this one, by default, it will move like here. And if I move this one here, you can see that it, this one stays like this. So it just adds a little bit more flexibility compared to default DWM. The next one we have is split status. And I can't lie, this is a bit of a gigabrain one. This one, a lot of these patches are pretty simple to set up. You just patch it and then boom, you're ready to go. But this one takes a little bit more effort. And, and it kind of took me a while to figure this one out as well. But I'll talk about this one in a bit when I explain my status bar. But now next we have status on all monitors. And it's been, essentially I have two monitors. By default, the status bar is only on one monitor and that's whichever monitor you are selected. This way I have a status bar on both monitors. It's just as simple as that. Next we have useless gaps. It's literally just the gaps. And then we have warp. All this does is that when I am moving my mouse, so if I select the new window, then you can see that my mouse goes to the other side. So you can see now it's on my webcam. Now, if I move it back, it should be here. And it's same with if I warp it or like I select my other monitor, then the mouse will be there as well. So it's just a bit handy because you can select that other monitor. Number one, it helps you see which monitor you've selected. Number two, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just handy. Like let's say I, I select this one and I actually need to do something. I can just quickly do it, you know? So it's just, it's useful. So those are all my patches. I think uh, if I show my config.h, I don't think there's anything too fancy here to show. I mean, this is my color scheme. Yeah, yeah. So essentially what I did is I made this custom command where I use flame shot. So if I press print screen, you will see that I have my, you know, little select thing. And what you can do is you can have a static con, like you can create this command print and I just called it print screen command and then just flame shot GUI null. And then I just input it here and that's it. But I think besides that, there's nothing, there's nothing else. There's nothing else. Yeah, no, besides that, it's, it's pretty, pretty default. Just my sizes and all that. But yeah, let's get into my status bar. So this one, we're going to actually have to go back to, we're going to have to go to dot scripts. We're going to go to my status bar. It's actually three different like script files. So we'll go with the default status bar. So we've got this status bar and it's this script. So there's, three functions to find. There's a day and date, there's a battery, there's a Wi-Fi, and there's a time date. Sorry, there's four functions. And all it is, 
is while do so essentially it's a forever while loop so while exist do this and it does except root the name and then day and date so first prints the day and date which you can see is right here so when you have a semicolon that essentially splits the status so this gets rid of the you know by default you have the selecting you have that little box that tells you what you're selecting this gets rid of that and it just says and it has whatever you have in the middle centered and then it has whatever else you have in the right so we have the day and date in the center then we have the battery then we have the wi-fi and then we have the time and date so for the day and date we see here that all i did is set the locale as the hungarian that's why it's in like the hungarian like it's saying not july and then so we got the year we have the month we have the day and then we have the or like the date and the day so because that's like the hungarian format so that's how i have it and next we have these two other scripts which is battery and wi-fi so if we go out we go to those we'll go to wi-fi first because i actually don't have the battery one on here but the wi-fi is very simple all it does is it runs the script it checks if it's disconnected so if we just run i'll just run this command for you guys but you can see that it'll be connected so so it's connected therefore it has this wi-fi else if it's disconnected then have that so simple as that and then the battery this one is actually really cool it took me a while it took me a bit to figure this out but it works well on my laptop literally so you have the battery you have if the battery is if there's no battery then exit so that's why there it doesn't display for me because i don't have a battery you can see that if i was to copy paste this in cat it'd say there is no such file so because the file does not exist it just exits so this checks if it's charging so if it's charging then echo the capacity percent and then have the little you know battery sign else and then it just does like a case so if it's 100 if it's between like 100 and 90 and 80 then just show full battery if it's between 70 and 60 then do this battery and then if it's 50 40 show this 30 20 show this and then if it's anything else so essentially just anything less than that it will show this like low battery and essentially that's it i'm pretty proud of the script and it on my laptop actually works perfectly so yeah there's nothing really to complain about now if we go into my d menu my d menu is very special because it shows up in the middle instead of on the left here and let's see what patches i've got in here it's a so we have the D menu border, we have the D menu center, D menu grid. So DWM center, I believe, is what centers it. The border, by default, there's meant to be a border here, but I actually turned off the border because I don't like it. And then the DWM grid, I think, makes it appear in this format where it's under instead of being on the right. But if we go to the config.h, I wonder if there's anything else. You know, we have the color scheme, we have the font size. But besides that, there's nothing really any spe anything special here. I just have those patches and that's about it. But we have Slock. This one, I don't think I even have any patches. No, I don't think there's anything really to patch. All I did was just change the colors so that when I close my window, I don't know if you can see it. Like I'll close my PC right now. Like I just lock it and it would be black and then I can type it in or I can just like remove it and then it'll be red. But I don't know if you guys saw that. But essentially that's all it is it's just the colors we have sl status but i don't even use it so it doesn't matter and then in st if we go into the config.h see if there's anything special here as well so we have the hack font like really most of it is just changing the font so i just added like other fonts so i've got the emoji font but i don't even use emojis in the terminal and then we have the old hungarian font so this literally means like if i swap to the old hungarian scripts we can see that it will literally be you can literally see it so i don't know it's cool i've done I've typed in Hungarian, old Hungarian every now and then. So it's useful. And then besides that, there, I don't think there really is anything else. Again, you have like the default color scheme, which is set here. And yeah, I don't think I really did anything. To be honest, I'm going to be honest. This is actually, I didn't like customize this ST myself. This is actually, I believe Luke Smith's ST. It should say like Luke Smith's or something like here. Yeah, Luke Smith's build. Um, because I don't know he just has he has some very like good default settings. So is there even a patch file? No. I, I I think there are some patches, but I guess he was a donor. He didn't actually include what patches he has. But yeah, that seems to be I think that's it. I think that's my entire setup explained. There you go. If you've been curious about how my setup works, why does it look like that? It literally is just patches. And yeah, that's about it. I hope you got something out of this video. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, it helps me out. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.